Okay, it looks like we are live. Thank you so much to, for being here today. We are here, um, I'm Sam, I'm the founder of Creative Life Scholars. I'm here today with Sarah Heron, and she is, um, is your business called True Color? True Colors with Sarah Heron, yes. Okay, great. And she is a color specialist and a style specialist. And she's here today to talk to us all about that. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. You're welcome. So I would love to know just kind of how you became interested in doing this and how you developed your business, a little bit of a background. Okay. So for many, many years, I was what we call a primary school teacher. So I was teaching six-year-old children. And whilst I love that, um, it was very stressful. Education in the UK is a particularly stressful environment at the moment. And I kind of hit a bit of a crossroads in my life. Um, I also had quite a nasty health scare. And I decided, you know what, it's time to do something different. And so I stepped away from teaching. And I actually bought um, a jewellery franchise business. And so I ran that with a business partner, a lady that I didn't know, but had who had actually worked for the company as a side hustle, as, ha as I had done. And we connected and we ran the business. Um, she ran it for 18 months. I ran it for two years. She stepped down after 18 months. And much as I love jewellery, as you can tell, um, I got to a point with it where I thought this doesn't feel aligned to me and my core values. It was very sales driven and, and quite um, aggressive in that. Or oh, the expectation was that it, we would be quite aggressive with that signing. And that wasn't me. And I didn't feel comfortable with it. And I thought, no, I need to find something else. And actually, through selling the jewellery, um, I connected with one of the biggest uh, colour consultancy businesses in the UK. And they actually asked me to join them. They wanted me to buy a franchise. And actually, I decided that having already had a franchise, I was going to do something else. And I was going to do it my way. And I was going to do it alone. I uh, felt I'd sort of developed enough um, experience in the world of business and I was just passionate about going it alone and doing my own thing in my own way and not going through a franchise um, business model. So what's the timeline from, from the time that you started the jewellery business to deciding that you were going to go do this alone? and start um, Well, I quit the jewellery business um, as a franchise at Christmas. And I trained over Christmas and in the snowy days of January, which we have a lot of here in the UK. And I trained to be an independent colour consultant and then launched the business actually on the 1st of March, which was just about the time when the UK went into coronavirus lockdown. Um, oh. So interesting times. But I'd always wanted the bulk of the business to be online because I want a business that I can carry with me around and about and I want to have extended holidays and my partner's looking at sort of pre-retirement and I wanted something that was flexible and, um, and that was another reason why I didn't go down the franchise route so I launched on the 1st of March this year and it's been absolutely amazing and I love it and I feel completely aligned to the values of what I'm doing and it's all about empowering women and giving women confidence. And that's something that I've struggled with personally for a number of years. So that was another one of my whys. Oh, I love that. So it is so important to, I think, give back and give people the things that you wish that you had had. I Massively. think that is a huge driving factor for a lot of us that start creative businesses. And it's so interesting that you started with jewelry because I also started with jewelry. Okay. And yeah, so my, my past is in making jewelry. Right. And I still make some jewelry, but I've kind of evolved to doing more coaching work and really um, my art, I think maybe you've seen a couple of the pieces on, I've been okay. sharing them on LinkedIn, but they're yes. bigger, they're larger pieces. Fabulous. But it, jewelry is so interesting to start with, I think. Um, it's just an easy place to start. For me, it was about, I think when I reflect back for a number of years, because of a toxic marriage that I was in, because of this um, these issues with confidence that I've always had, my self-esteem was at, at, at rock bottom. And I think I used jewellery and I used big hats at weddings and I used anything as a mask 
that kind of so people would be drawn to the neck oh what a beautiful necklace they weren't looking at me they were looking at the jewelry or at a wedding it was always the hat oh i love the hat and it was about distraction and it was about wearing a mask um and i suppose i'm a bit of a magpie and i'm a mum of two boys so i've always been surrounded by men so jewelry was me expressing my femininity as well um so yeah i think that came into play as well with the jewellery. Um, I do still sell the jewellery as a side hustle, but very much as a sort of add-on to my colour and style business. So it's more about working with clients now and identifying their appropriate colours and identifying style that works for them, their personality, their body shape, and saying, well, actually, this scale of necklace isn't right for you, Sam, because you're much more petite than I am and you need something with a smaller scale and you should wear silver or you should wear gold because of your colouring. So th that's still running in the background as part yeah, of Yeah, so tell me, I want to know more about, like, what does it, because what does it mean to be a, a colour consultant? Like, what? how do you do that? Like, what does the process look like? I want to know all the things <laughs> about the what it looks like because I, I have no idea. Well, it's just amazing and I absolutely love it. And going back to what we were talking about before and feeling authentic and aligned with one's own values, I would do this for free if I could afford to do it because I believe in it so strongly. And I don't say that lightly. Um, I say it because it's the truth, because the impact that it can make on a lady's confidence and her own self-esteem is absolutely visionary. And that was how I got into it. So going back over a little bit, um, you asked how I got into it. As part of selling the jewellery, I made this connection with um, this colour consultancy. And they actually asked me to present at their um, annual national conference. So because some of their ladies were um, in partnership with us using our jewellery as part of their consultancy services. And as part of that, they asked me, would I go and have my colours done, as they called it? because I was presenting to a number of colour and, and style consultants and they felt it was important that I was wearing what was best for me, my colouring, my style. They said, as the ladies will spend more time looking at you and criticising what you're wearing than they will actually listening to the content of your presentation. So very kindly, they paid for me to go and have my colours done. And it was at that point, I think, that I had my epiphany because at that point, I could see it was an in-person consultation as opposed to online, which is what I'm doing at the moment. And so as part of um, an in-person consultation, what happens is that the consultant will drape various colours around your neck. We've got a, a drape here. It's perhaps not the best, of course. It's a little bit dark and it's certainly not one of my colours, but this is the way it goes. So they kind of put this up against your face and then they take it away and you can see very quickly instantaneously whether that's a good color for me or not and then they whittle it down um color by color by color until they can identify what works and as a client you can see that magically happening in front of your eyes because the certain colors are put close to your face you want to say oh take that away it looks horrible it's draining me i look really old those dark circles under my eyes are, are really um, defined and other colors you you put next to you oh that's that looks really nice oh I look really healthy I look quite youthful so it's all about finding the right colors that suit your skin tone the texture of your skin um, the color of your hair texture of your hair eye color the brightness of the whites of your eyes there's a whole range of criteria that we use to assess which colors work best for each client and at the end of the consultation um, and then able to give them a diagnosis. And what we use essentially are what we call four seasonal palettes. So I might have um, gone through the consultation process with drapes if it's an in-person consultation or digitally. Um, I can do it as well if we're doing it online. The photographs that the client sent me, I asked them to send them to a certain, um, to certain guidelines to make sure that I get really good photographs to work from. And the diagnosis will then be either a seasonal palette. So I might say to you, Sam, I've assessed you and you're an autumn palette. And these are the colours within the autumn palette that you should wear. Or I might say, well, actually, Sam, no, you're more of a winter. So you've got a cool base palette and these are the shades that you should wear. They're the best colours for you. 
um, obviously the spring and the summer as well. And on top of that, there are six tonal palettes. So if a client doesn't fit perfectly into the four seasonal palettes, then there are further six that I can use. So altogether, I've got 10 palettes that I can choose from. Um, so again, online, we have a Zoom call and we go through my presentation, which is based on my recommendations, which explains a little bit of the theory. So you would say to me, you know, as a client, right, um, this is the information. Here are my photographs. I ask you to fill in a simple questionnaire. I then put all of that information together. We meet over Zoom and I go through the theory of how I've arrived at the diagnosis that I have. I then give you advice on um, makeup colors, um, how to wear those colors in your wardrobe. So if, for instance, bright yellow was one of your colors, I wouldn't expect you, unless you've got a very gregarious personality, to wear bright yellow from head to foot. But what I'll do as part of that presentation is I'll give you suggestions and um, put together a few outfits as part of the presentation and say, well, these are the combinations you could try. And it works in a similar way with the style as well. And of course, the beauty of being online is that I can work with clients right around the world. Um, so I have worked with a couple of ladies in the States, actually. Um, and yeah, I'll just, I just, I do, I love it. Um, the feedback that I get from clients is just amazing. And I'm now, gosh, how old am I? I'm 57. And I'm a passionate believer that you're never too old to, be who you want to be and ladies come to me at various stages in life some as young as you know 20s and 30s perhaps they're new mums they've had a crisis of confidence um they've lost their mojo they've lost their identity they've lost their style identity or at the other end you get people like myself who are now empty nesters who are like wow i spent all these years giving the best of me and my time and meeting everybody else's needs to my children, what about me? Now I'm going to start on my life adventure. Now I'm going to start my life journey. And uh, they might be dating again. They might have gone through divorce or been widowed, whatever the circumstances. Or they've come out of a corporate environment and actually want to now start traveling or want to start dressing more casually. So my client base is very, very varied. Yeah, I mean, I think, gosh, there's so much to say. It's so fascinating. But I really love the way that you started talking about this, which was when you were at that conference and they told you that people were going to be distracted by what you were wearing if you didn't get your colors done. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so interesting to think about because I'm mm -hmm. interested in becoming a speaker at some point and I have thought about you know what I would wear in front of yeah. an audience I used to speak a lot when I had my day job and I there was a certain thing that I kind of had to wear mm -hmm. to some extent and now if I were to speak I would have a lot more latitude with what I would be able to wear and the choices I would make. And I think I've, I mean, I've experienced that too. I've experienced people going on stage and me being distracted by what they were wearing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't hear a thing that they're saying because the whole time I'm just thinking, she got that dress at TJ Maxx, I have it in my closet and I can't believe that she's wearing that on stage right now, that kind of thing. Um, and so yeah, I think, and and so many of us here in this group, in the CLS group, are thinking about going through a transformation from leaving a day job to yeah. creating a a business of our own. And I know when I did that transition, I wore sweatpants for yeah. like two months, and I I am going. I'm right now. I'm definitely going through that that transformation of like, what am I wearing? What do I want to wear but i also i love this idea of colors i don't know a thing about how i would determine what my colors are i am like a rainbow i wear all sorts of things all the time i wear and also i feel like some of it is partially what you were talking about before about having these distracting items to just yeah. do you feel like you've come across people that are like wearing distracting colors to oh, take the I attention off of themselves and the reverse is true as well. And actually, I've become a little bit obsessive 
I did it when I first trained and I would be watching the TV and I would be saying to my partner, why is that lady wearing that dress? Those just aren't her colours. If she had nude coloured shoes on, that would elongate her frame. She'd look so much better. And you do, you become quite, I hesitate to say judgmental because I would hate to think I was ever judgmental. But you just want people to look and be their best. So it's, it's driven by passion and it's driven by positivity. It's not driven by criticism and judgment. Um, but over here in the UK at the moment, we've, we're just beginning to see the easing of lockdown. So a lot of people have spent a lot of time quite seriously locked down and wearing the yoga pants and the jogging pants and the sweatpants. And it's like, oh, wow, where do I start now? And we've just had a bit of a heat wave going on as well. So we're not used to the weather. So people are now rushing out. Now the shops are open and buying a lot of some clothes. People have piled on the weight during lockdown. So there are all these issues going around. And I always say to people, color doesn't cost anything. If you go to the supermarket or you go to your nearest mall, your stores, and you buy a t-shirt, whether you buy a red t-shirt or whether you buy a black t-shirt, isn't going to cost any more money. But actually the transformation in you removing the black and wearing the red is going to be massive. Um, and lots of ladies come to me probably because I'm quite unstereotypical or atypical of a style and colour consultant because I'm not a size zero. I don't shop in designer outlets. I don't have lots of money to spend on my wardrobe. So I'm quite savvy in that sense. And I like to promote the fact that I'm not spiky, stiletto heel wearing, sharp suit wearing person yes I can I can dress up I can look smart but I'm very much more down to earth and you'll find me mostly in slippers not stilettos you know it's that kind of approach that I want to adopt because I think there's a need for everyday women if that doesn't sound patronizing to come to somebody who's such as myself where previously people have seen color and style consultants has only been accessible to the celebs and the rich and famous, and actually it doesn't need to be that sophisticated. Um, but going back to what you're saying about wearing certain colours for presenting, each colour has its own psychology as well, and that in itself is, you know, your ladies will know all about this, I'm sure, as you will, but that's just fascinating. Um, and recently the Queen was on the, the TV giving a speech about lockdown and thanking our health and key workers and she was wearing it like a turquoise suit and I was fascinated. So I did some more research on why turquoise and, and turquoise is a color that's all about calm and reassurance and it's all about health and well-being. So, you know, it can make such a, a big difference and, and people can wear color wrongly so easily. And in the corporate environment, people are inclined to wear maybe a red jacket, but red can be quite aggressive and quite in your face. So sometimes it's more about the style than the colour, sometimes it's more about the colour than the style. So it very much depends on lifestyle, it depends on context. Um, so yeah, it's a it, it's a minefield, but you can so quickly get it right. And I, I always say to my clients, the cost of the consultation, which is $100, is an investment that will see you through life. You'll never have to do it again. Um, if you want to and you want to revisit and some people get to my age and they maybe had a consultation 20 or 30 years ago and they've forgotten or their skin tone or their hair's changed over those years and they want a bit of a refresh. But otherwise, you know, it can be a one-off um, and the benefits last forever. And then what you can do, obviously, is you can then go from colour to style to accessorising to a kind of closet declutter. There are so many options to bring all of this together, creating a capsule wardrobe. It's, yeah, it's it's wonderful. I just, I love it. So I have a question based on something that oh. you said before. You said that you pick a palette for someone and they oh. could be a winter palette or a fall palette. So yeah. how, what does that mean? Because it's summer right now. So if you give, if you were to give me a winter palette, I'd be like, what, what do I wear in summertime? Like, what does that mean? Well, again, we talk through that. So to take the winter palette, for instance, I always say the colours within a winter palette are the colours of jewels. 
So we're talking emeralds, rubies, um, sapphires, diamonds, those sorts of very clear, rich colours. Now, there are ways, ways of wearing those. I mean, you've got, I think it's a black top arm. Or it's navy. Yeah. Navy, yeah. It's really dark navy, yeah. Yeah, but black straight out of a winter palette, but you can still wear it in summer. So it's the name that's given rather than the season that we're, we're in. So once you've got your palette of colours, the reference to winter will last you all year round. So, you know, you'll always be able to get a sundress in, in black. You'll always be able to get one in red. You'll be able to get one in yellow. So once you've got those colours and you receive them after the consultation digitally so that you've always got them on your phone or iPad or wherever, so when you're going shopping, you know, you can um, refer back to those colours. And I always say it's a journey, and I will be with you in that changing room if you want me to be. You know, and if you're trying something on, you're not sure about the colours, send me a photograph. Sarah, what do you think? Help, I'm stuck. Um, particularly if it's for a special occasion or something, you know, important to you, then that's just part and parcel of the service that I offer. Um, so winter is very much colours of jewels. Um, spring is the colour of the tropics, of so very bright, very vibrant colours. Think bird of paradise. Autumn or fall, as you guys would call it. Um, we're talking about the colours of all the colour of the fallen leaves on the ground, so very muddied colours. Um, and again, colours like mustard are very on trend at the moment. So although it is a is a is an autumn palette, it's a colour that you can wear all year round. Right. Um, and then summer, I would say they're they're the shades of um, watercolour paintings. So think kind of Monet's mm -hmm. garden colours that have had. Um, water or white added to them they're very muted quite soft pastel colors um so those would be your colors and then as i say i would then work with you to explore how you could wear those colors all year round so for those ladies that do have a wardrobe full of black and black only really sits inside the winter palette i would then say to them well don't ditch all of your black i've still got black black's not in my palette i still wear it but I know that it's the colour that's closest to my face that reflects up onto my face that's the most important. So whilst I might wear black sweatpants or leggings, I might have a brighter colour on the top. I might even have a black top on, but I would have a scarf in my colours. And scarves and accessories are a girl's best friend because that's how you introduce that pop of colour. Um when after having had my colour consultation done, I had to move from silver jewellery to gold. And when I look back mm -hmm. at photographs, my goodness, I can really see the difference. I mean, I've got quite a sort of coral orangey lipstick on. Previously, it would have been like an icy pink I probably would have wear, worn. I look ghastly, I look like a ghost when I look back. Um, so it's all about giving you a healthy glow and naturally, really. Um, it's so interesting. I think it's, I just think it's fascinating. I love the posts that you posted about the color, color psychology. I think that's just so, I, I just am fascinated by color. And I think mm. a lot of us are that are creatives. I think you kind of have to be fascinated with color, especially if you're a visual artist of any kind. But when it comes to um, the body, I think a lot of us put on our overalls and, or sweatpants or whatever, and we forget about yeah. our bodies. I mean, I talk about that a lot. We we talk about this about this issue of forgetting about our bodies in the group a lot when especially yeah. when it comes to working out and just generally taking care of our bodies, but this is another another level, another it thing is. to think about with with regard to caring for your pre presentation of yourself um and your body. I would say it's like oh. self-care. You know, there, there's such a lot written about mental health and mental well-being. Um, and for a lot of ladies, it's about self-care. And it's like, wow, this is an investment in me. And I'm going to put me first for once. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. again, another way of, of looking at it. Um, and ultimately, it'll save you money because everything in your wardrobe, ultimately, in your closet, um, will be clothes that will work for you. You know, how many times have you been shopping, brought something home, tried it on, it was ghastly, you back. 
what a pain is that you know this saves time it saves money all those shopping mistakes that you made that hung in the wardrobe because when you got it back it wasn't quite right wasn't quite the right color um so it is about saving time saving money and you know making what i do affordable as i say is, is a very much a part of what i'm doing you know you'll find many other color consultants out there that are charging double and quite often more than double um my offering but the value for money is a massive um indicator for, um that i get through my feedback is what i'm trying to say people always say my goodness i didn't expect you to do that oh this is so thorough i hadn't imagined that you'd go so deep but i want to future proof the information that i'm giving people so that it is something that they can do once that they can invest in and then hopefully build on that yeah i think yes it's so amazing that, that you're providing the service for people i think it's just beautiful and i talk we've talked also about um how some people don't think of themselves as creative and the example that yeah. i use a lot with people that don't think of themselves as creative as even if you are not thinking of yourself as creative you're still making decisions about the way that you present yourself in the world and that to me is creative whether yeah. you're making the decision to put on sweatpants you're making the decision to put on red lipstick or carl lipstick or no yeah. lipstick at all um that's you know, those are just, you know, putting on black, putting on navy, those are decisions that you're making, they're creative decisions. Absolutely. And I think that's really um, important for people to know and understand. But I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. so if people are interested in becoming a consultant of some kind, having mm -hmm. to do with style or working with people um, that are, that want to, to work with style, do you have any suggestions about how they could get started? Well, ultimately, it's something that I would like a little bit further down the line to be able to offer. I'd like to be able to train color consultants because I'm so passionate about what I do and I can see that being part of my business. Um, I'm happy to be a sounding board. I'm happy to help people. What I would suggest to anybody that's interested in what I'm saying, um, and particularly from a business point of view, which they can run as a side hustle, they can run it as a hobby if they want to, or they can make it full time as I'm doing, is to have your colors done yourself first. See the process, see how it works, because you've got to be convinced about what you're doing. Um, I think my biggest tip I would give anybody thinking of starting a business is be authentic, be aligned with your own core values. Um, I couldn't do this if I didn't believe in it. And when I saw literally the magic in front of my own eyes, that was what gave me the fire in my belly. And that was what I wanted them to be able to share. And having identified over Christmas, over that period of reflection, that I am a nurturer and I am a giver, and that's what I do best. This is my way of giving. So I think you have to feel that, that passion. I think you have to want to do that. But for the start point would certainly be to hook up with um, a trainer. By all means, contact me, you know, LinkedIn, or I'll drop whatever links um, and people can contact me with any questions, any queries. I'm more than happy. Yeah, to your your links, there. your website and email address, I think, are in yeah. the caption for this live. So it should, I think all of your information should be there. I'm not sure if I include your LinkedIn profile, but I definitely included your website. So That's if anyone great. is looking, definitely be sure to look at the caption to this live. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, give it a go. You know, um, you don't have to work online. Conversely, you don't have to work in person. You can choose. Um, the online color consultation, the online style consultation is fairly new and I think has taken a massive um, climb up the ladder due to lockdown for obvious reasons. Right. Um, I think historically it started in around the 1950s and it was very much in person based. Um, but, you know, there are options and it's about exploring what you enjoy and what you appreciate. Um, but That's yes, wonderful. I'm happy to answer any questions or give any support that I can and, you know, put people in touch with other people that I know um, who can provide Thank you. training or whatever.
Thank you so much. And Sarah is a part of our community here at CLS. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to tag me or tag Sarah in the comments and um, we can answer your question. We can get your questions answered. And um, I want to ask you the last question, which is, of course, what does it mean to you to live a creative life? I think as a teacher, I became very aware of the different types of learning different types of teaching and I think a big mistake that a lot of teachers can fall in the trap of is not addressing the which children learn and I recognised that as a visual learner I was happy always had to write everything down I've always had to see pictures I'm not one of these people that can just hear the information and process it to learn visually for me it was about using understanding and resourceful as a teacher and as a really being blind to soul that's what being creative and having a creative business means to me um and there's nothing better thank you so much that's wonderful it's been a pleasure speaking with you today thank you for being here if there's any other comment um any other um links you want me to add to um this let me know but um it's been a pleasure speaking with you today thank you thank so you. much for being here thank you thank you very much really enjoyed it lovely to connect take care all right you too all right thank you guys i hope you enjoyed this and um I will talk to you all soon. Thanks.